today I will try to introduce you, uh, at least I will try to do a short introduction uh, to HTTPD server and the init uh, services you can have directly uh, available uh, directly from the Erlang release. So, uh, before starting, uh, just a small word about init. So, init is a kind of framework you can use uh, for different kind of services, but usually it's for HTTPD and HTTPC. So, HTTPD uh, is uh, HTTPD daemon. It's, um, it's an HTTP server and HTTPC is the HTTPC client. I will start with HTTPC and after I will just uh, dig a little bit around HTTPD. <coughs> so, how to start it? At first, if you want to use uh, HTTPC, yeah, just before starting, uh, you are probably already aware of ACNI, for example, or GUN, so acne and gun both uh, have been created by French guys uh, one is Benoit Chenot and the other one is Louis Cougar and you are uh, and both uh, of those of this client clients are probably used by so many people right now in you in the, your Erlang and Elixir community uh, so, I, I think uh, in that HTTPC is a great tool, but you can't do everything with it. Uh, in fact, you can't do HTTP2, you can't do HTTP3, Creek, uh, and all the recent protocol. HTTPC is only in a, only an HTTP 101. Uh, one point on uh, oh sorry that's that's yeah uh it's it's a uh, http one one uh, if you prefer and so you can do more than that but if you want to create something quick and without a lot of uh, dependencies httpc is is a, is a great tool so anyway usually if you want something that work pretty great uh i should probably recommend you to use Acne or Gun. Both are really, really awesome projects. Anyway, so how it works. At first, you will need to start in it. So you have two ways to do that, using the start function or just by executing the application start. So application, once you're all started, in it. And so, as you can see, you can use those methods to start this application. When it's done, you should have no uh, ac have access now to the services running. So, in theory, if I'm doing that, you will see we have a default instance for HTTPC. And we can use it like that. Also, we will have a problem, but... Okay, uh, should it be get? Uh, sorry, it's get like that. Yep, A and R. Who are you? Sorry, just I will. Uh, can you hear me? It's better because actually I had I had some music because it was so lonely. <laughs> okay, I can hear you. So, uh, what the IDB? So what the IDB beyond that? Oh wait, I I have a small problem here. Okay, should be better. Uh, anyway, so HTTPC uh, is a small tool. Uh, you can use it really, really nicely directly from uh, the, 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 virtual, the virtual machine Erlang without installing anything. So by default, sorry, I did a mistake. 
because I'm switching so on so many technologies right now, I'm a bit lost. So anyway, uh, HTTPC is really easy. So actually, it's not working because you don't have SSL. Uh, to, to to be sure SSL is started, you will need to start also the dependencies. So in this case, you will start uh, SSL like that. And in theory, it should work. You will have access to uh, the web page uh, in this example, OpenBSD, but you can do it with something different, like, for example, uh, Google or any kind of other website. So by default, there is no really uh, support for SSL. This is only a brute uh, raw, sorry, a raw uh, HTTP connection. And if you want to have the support for SSL, you will need to start SSL as well. So HTTP, HTTPC is, is really, really, really boring stuff. And so it, it works. Yeah, it, it works pretty well. But there is a lot of problem. The first one is, as you can see, this is the list. This is not, uh, you know, this is a string, an Erlang string. This is not bit string. And sometimes it could um, generate some problems, in particular when you are dealing with G JSON or something like that. And so the IDB, uh, yeah, I, I, every time I'm using HTTPC, for example, I'm trying to convert this. Uh, element in by, uh, by string or binary to avoid those kind of problem. And the second issue is if you can see uh, this is a tuple and the first element is a code, so it's okay. And after that, you will have the headers. Unfortunately, with HTTPC, you don't have access to all headers, so that's a big problem. But uh, I will. Uh, I will show you that after we, uh, with HTTPD. But anyway, it's working. If you want to do something quick and you don't have time or you know you don't want to deal with external dependencies, by default you have init HTTPC and you can do particularly yeah maybe ninety nine percent uh, of the job with it. Okay. So next, because actually we just uh, do, we just did a small uh, GET request. Uh, for example, if you want to do a POST request, you can do something like that. So it's a quick, oh, that's that's a funky way to call something. But uh, HTTPC it's quite old, so <laughs> actually that's not really the best way to do. But it's just to give you an example. So you you do something like that. Here you will have the headers, so I will just do something like that. And here you will have the body. Uh, no, the body here, and the headers. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I don't remember. Just let's check that in the documentation. So we have the HTTP option, HTTP option here, up, uh, and. Uh, where is this things? Uh, HTTP option, time out SSL. So this is not this one here. So this is a request. Up. And so we have the HTTP either, either for first, and after we have the content type. Yeah, okay. So the content type. So this is the headers. The content type. So for example, uh, application uh, JSON, for example. And here's the body. And you can't give something different than uh, a list, uh, an Erlang string. So anyway, it's working. Uh, I don't have any idea where I can use a post right now, but uh, I think you have the ID. And just after, you have the different option. So for example, th the, the, this option here, this option here, it falls the HTTP, uh, HTTPC option. And the next one, it's, it's for the sockets. It's no, it's for the profile. Uh, yeah, HTTP option, option profile. So you can switch to any kind of profile. So for example, if you have HTTPC with uh, behind a proxy, for example, you can use it just by switching to another profile. And if you want different kind of options, so for example, if you want to set different timeout for HTTP or maybe TCP, you can directly set it uh, here. Uh, these those kind of option. So anyway, uh, it's 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 working like that. It was not really the goal, but it was to show you another uh, HTTPC client. Client. The next one is HTTPD. So HTTPD, 
that's the one we want to 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 use to use uh we need to start it using uh, inets directly like that <coughs> and we need to to give some different kind of option and to be honest with you i don't know every option by numbers so i will just take a look on it that that's a big problem when you are <laughs> developing on something and you are switching every day from different kind of technologies you are you are mixing everything together it's 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 just crazy so uh the way to start it sorry i need also this one here so service service conf and o so this one here we don't really care but this one is important so o to start the services it will be httpd and the service configuration will be as uh, the instance of httpd running so for example if you want an httpd running uh, on a port different than maybe uh, eight, uh, eight, 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 eight thousand, for example, you will create a new services called HTTPG with a, um, a totally dedicated configuration. That's how it's working. And you need to use inets if you want to start it properly, but you can also use a, a function called start, uh, start standalone here. Uh, it's if you want to deal with your own supervision tree because by default if you are starting in it in it, it's an application and you will have um, access to the in it supervisors tree and in this case you will have probably some problem depending on, on your project so for example if you need some flexibility in it will not be perhaps not flexible enough for you in this case you can directly start your servers so your HTTP, HTTP, HTTP server directly with this command. If we do that, so I will have an error because actually uh, I don't have some kind of configuration. It will just give you access uh, to to a PID. This PID you will put it everywhere you want. So for example, in a supervision tree or anywhere you want. So you have at least three mandatory option to start httpd the first one oh yeah just a, a quick story about httpd uh since erlang 23 or 22 uh httpd was really really uh, modified in in depth in particular the configuration part HTTPD was created at first to have the same configuration than the Apache server configuration. I don't know if you know uh, Apache, but Apache was really, it was kind of really big uh, server, yeah, in, uh, like 10 years ago. And it's, it's still the, the case maybe for PHP or, or other uh, services like that. And actually, the configuration is a bit weird it's a kind of xml like configuration and before before erlang 23 we had the possibility to configure httpd using the same syntax so you add also kind of layers of compatibility between apache and httpd that means uh, if someone wanted to move on erlang and wanted just to uh, switch from a Apache HTTPD to Erlang HTTPD, it was mm, not easy, but it was possible to do it quickly. So that that's 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 that was the idea. So it's pretty old, but it's working again. It's like HTTPC. You don't have all funky protocol we have right now. You don't have Quick. You don't have HTTP two. You don't even have HTTP three. But you have HTTP, uh, HTTP uh, 1.1. This is the main version we really need. And here you have the mandatory properties. The first one is the port. The port is, like I said just before, for example, 8000. The server name, this is also a mandatory thing. So this is a server st string that will be uh, given to the client clients wanting 
to have access to your uh, object directly on your servers and you have the server roots so this is the server where the configuration no not the configuration where the um, server will start so for example if you are in slash tmp uh, the server will get access to slash tmp and not fetch everything but you will have access to uh, the possibility to write logs and so on and finally you have the document roots because httpd by default uh, was created to share uh, uh, static files and so if you set the document root uh, with the a pass uh, the files will be directly accessible from uh, your computer so i will just give you an example right now uh, port uh, 8000 uh, document uh, server name uh, call it uh, test document root i will create just something like that and I will create a file like uh, hello world uh, and in slash tmp httpd slash index dot html and here we put slash tmp slash bloop, 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 uh, httpd and uh, uh, next one it's several, uh, several several routes and this one will be stored for example i don't know i will just put in slash tmp for for the moment i don't really care and so we have one started one httpd services started in standalone so that means this one if it's if it's if this one is crashing if i remember correctly uh, you will not have a way to back up it properly so all the state need to be managed by your own stuff and not by inets so no if we are going to localhost 8000 you will have access to this page and you will have the hello world uh, message just right so that's the idea how it's working you have lots uh, plenty of options uh, to be honest with you uh, because this configuration was directly uh, inspired and extracted from the app from the apache configuration so that means uh, you have lot a lot a lot of options so for example the first one is a profile so if you want to create a new, another services for example running on another address you can just start this one here so i will use the standalone but i could create uh, any, any kind of uh, system so here if we go to the port 8001 you will have access to the same page because actually it's running and so on and so on. So that's that's the idea behind HTTPD. Uh, next, what uh, what I can show you right now for the moment. That, so that's just the configuration. By default, it will just show you a quick listing of the files present in the document root. But that's not really the things we really want to play with right now. We want to deal with something a bit more mm, fun and to do that httpd is also offering a way to create different module and by module um, this is not really a behaviors you know this is more some kind of function callback just used to share uh, from uh, the request from the clients to the server until the server creates the response to the client so i will I just created a module called, it, uh, called T and this module I will create a function called do and this module one will have the request so this request here uh, we need to include another library it will be called uh, I think it's called uh, init include httpd I think it's like that we'll just do ok I think it's working so that's great and this module here it's also why I wanted to go there it's include it's offer you a record called uh, called mode and this uh, record is really important because when the client will ask something directly from the servers 
uh, the server will get this data structure here. And so this data structure is the one you are interested in if you want to play with HTTPD create some modules. So I will show you how it works. So we have here the request. Uh, we need to be sure this is a mod. And this mod here, I will just create something like uh, IO format up uh, rec just to show you the content and at the end we have the it's break and we need to return a code so for example uh, to 200 and a message so for example okay let's try if it's working right now so okay we have the module and if we want to start a new server so for example i want to start a new server standalone this time i will just uh, store the PID. I will kind. I will have the possibility to kill it uh, just after. But here we have a way to define uh, what kind of module we want to to execute. And I think it's module with a S at the end, but I'm not really sure. Uh, module. Yeah, module a list of atoms. So we have modules, and we will put the module T. Okay. So here we are. So now we are going there and we have an internal server error. That's normal because I think uh, this part of the code is not right. But I think you will have access to the full data structure. So this one here. And at first it's okay because I wanted to show you that. So we have the mode here and sorry. Yeah, correct. So uh, that's uh, that's the mod uh, system. So we have. I don't know if if you are. I don't know if you are familiar with uh, record, but I can just. Okay, <laughs> okay. So uh, a record in. Um, wait a second. No, yeah, you don't want to read it. <laughs> no no it's okay so okay i will just try to explain you really really quick how record is working so a record is a named a uh, name tuple uh, so that means you have the tuple but you can imagine that every element in the tuple uh, has also a name so for example here i will create one uh, i will call for example the first field will be name and the second one will be, uh, I don't know, uh, f uh, age, for example. Okay. Uh, it's not RL. Uh, RL, uh, RL, no. It's uh, read record, it's RL. Remove, uh, define a record, it's RD, RD, okay. So here we have one here. And as you can see, when I'm creating a new record, we have the test, this is the name of the record. And we have, for example, name here, that's the name of the field. And age, this is the name of the field, and we have the content. So if we want to create something, so for example, name uh, Joe Armstrong, and age, uh, for example, I don't know, uh, 1979, for example, we have this kind of things. And what it's really, really great with record is you can do something like uh, match here. So for example, name. I did a mistake somewhere. Uh, there is a missing, okay just here okay so we have name here and we have age here and record is really really an important feature in Erlang because actually a lot of uh, database and other things like ETS are using a lot this kind of um, of, uh, of data structure but that's another subject here we have uh, if I just go back to the code I wanted to show you. Where is it? Okay, so 
not a problem. I will just restart it. Let's do that. Okay, so it's crashing. That's normal because actually uh, the return is not really great. But you have the different field. So for example, if uh, here we have, <coughs> sorry, uh, we have uh, the connection. We have the connection of the client. The where the socket is listening. We have normally the name of the system. So this is the host name. I'm running on Parrot. Uh, here we have a lot of different kind of information. For example, for the the profile used by Inet HTTPG, uh, we have the methods. So the HTTP method methods used by the client. Uh, we have the host. We have the path, uh, and we have the protocol, and so on. We have the headers, and so on. So with that, we can do a lot of stuff. And I just need to check HTTPD here, go to the module do, and as you can see, we have the break, we have new data, and this is response. Uh, don't know if it's still running. Okay, and this instance is, is still running, so it should be okay. Okay. It's not running anymore. And we have still a problem because actually I'm stupid. I didn't compile this one here. Okay, let's do that. And we have the okay result. So that's the idea how it's working. So now, say you want to create a route. Uh, by default here, uh, this is the kind of uh, wildcard part done. So that means everything uh, coming here uh, will just be redirected directly to the OK part and it should be OK. Everyone is happy, it's good. But if you want, for example, for example to uh, use the mod uh, things to as a router, uh, you can use, we can use something like that. So I don't know, what can I do? Mm, say post. And when I go to post things, I will just put, for example, a request, an error, and say error, that's bad. Very bad. Okay, here, up, like that. Ah, okay, it should be okay. Let's try if I can compile it. It's working. So actually, by default, with get is it's working, and we will use HTTPC uh, with a request, and we say post. It will be localhost, and it's uh, eight thousand and three. And what's going on here? Because actually, it's a request, so we want something. We don't have any kind of headers. Uh, the application will be, I don't know, uh, text, for example, we don't really care. And uh, the last one was the body, and the body, I will put it like that. And I think I did a mistake here. That That's really a problem. <laughs> The profile, it's okay because uh, we are using the default. So the first one is the put meta post method. Next, the request. The request, we have the header, the content type. Maybe I did something wrong with the content type. Mm, no, normally, it should be okay. And we have the HTTP body. And the HTTP body is IO list or binary. Uh, actually, it should be okay like that but maybe I did something wrong here. And uh, I missed something somewhere. Method, request, HTTP option, and option. Okay. 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 And theory should work, but I think I just, uh, Okay, 
So we have the answer here, error, that's very bad. And we have the bad request with the error code, the correct error code. So that's how it's working. But hey, that's great, but storing everything on in one module is not really flexible at all. So that's why when you are started, uh, starting a new project, you can say, for example, you have the first um, the first module will be used, for example, for authentication. So say you want to have a specific header and the header will contain, yeah, no problem. So I wanted just to show you uh, the last things you need to know if you want to use HTTPD, it's the pipeline stuff. So say, for example, the first module is for, it's for authentication. So you have users, you have password and so on, or you have a kind of a bearer access with kind of uh, API, API K or something like that. Okay. So the first module will be used uh, to check these things. So here I will not create something, something like an API K. I will just say, if we go to the request uh, URL, uh, for example, test, I will let this um, module uh, uh, switch, not switch, but uh, forward this request to another one. So this to the next module. So we can say proceed. And here, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, in the proceed, you can put, for example, a new uh, data here. So for example, we have, uh, I don't know, results uh, valid okay okay so here we have this kind of stuff here and now we can go to the next one so i will call it http uh, uh, t2 and in t2 i will just do something like uh, up uh, here and we have the request here so we don't care because uh, we need to break it and we will put uh, like you find it correct and so i will try to recompile the module it looks good for this one and this one we have an error because actually it will not work if i'm doing something like that it's quite normal okay it's working and so i will try to start a new server with t2 and running on 8004 let's try that so by default everything will be forward to the good stuff and if we go to test you find it so the first one here will be the check next we will do for example another stuff and another one and another one and by default if you take a look on the the source the sources uh, you will find a lot a lot of so, uh, of example so it's called mod so those kind of modules are used uh, usually by http d to deal with a lot of stuff so for example we have the authentication with I don't know, Nesia, for example. And you have an example of how to use Amnesia to store uh, credentials and use them directly on HTTPD and create a basic access uh, to your services. So that's, that's, that's the main idea. Yeah. That, that's that's a really really short introduction uh, but if you understand oh for example the do is working the do function is working uh, you have the for example oh I, I forgot something really really important so in the request you have the mode part the data part here and I will put uh, I will just print it at first just to show you because here we set um, an element uh, variable here and this data structure here will be directly um, stored after uh, in the request uh, data structure 
So that means if I'm doing, uh, if I do something like that here, and I will just recompile this one. So just for fun, we'll do, we'll go to the roots. So we have just the information about the request. And if we go to slash test, you find it. And in theory, we have the result valid. So the, st the, the state of the request can be altered between the different modules by directly returning the values you want to, to put somewhere. So for example, if you have an access here uh, with a specific user, I don't know, maybe he, he only got access to a small subset of your services, you can, you can set these values here and in the next module, you will have access to this data and with this data you can say okay this guy don't have access uh, to these things or these things and so on not really it's a, a, a state sharing between modules so that mean that, that means uh, if you want to share something because something's happened or you want to say, okay, this guy is weird, for example, or I don't know, those kind of stuff, you can share the state across the different modules. That's, that's the idea. <clears throat> so next, if you want to use HTTPD, you also need to have an idea of the uh, URI string module. And this, this one is really, really important because it will give you the... Um, uh, if I remember correctly, you are developing Elixir. In Elixir, you have some things called uh, URL. Uh, I don't remember. Or oh, URI. URX. Mm. Uh, where is... Okay, because I'm using ASTF. Not a problem. Uh, being a UX. Oh, I don't have it. Oh, anyway, we have URL, and uh, in Erlang we have practically the same. It's called uh, URI underscore string, and this one you can uh, decompose, recompose, uh, dissect query, for example, and uh, have an idea of if the URL is valid or not. So, uh, in quotes. Okay, this is not this one. Uh, which one? It's what? Resolve pass. Sorry. <laughs> App, uh, okay. And so you have the scheme, you have the pass, you have the host. It's um, a map, and you can re re reinsert this data uh, in to recompose something. So, for example, if you want to have it back. Uh, you have, uh, I think it's recompose and you can back like that. And if you want to add something, so for example, a query, uh, I did a mistake somewhere. Yeah, because this is a map. So you can, so you can do something like that. Or you can do something like that, for example, if say you have a specific pass, so uh, the data uh, toto and foo slash bar, up, and it should be okay. So you can you can you can alter uh, the URL you have directly with this uh, this module. So that's 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 the idea behind HTTPD. And why I want to use it for the awesome uh, Erlang list is because what we are doing right now is not really complex. And just using something like that, it's, it's enough. <laughs> we don't need more right now. And this is uh, directly from Erlang release. So no problem. You don't have dependencies at all. You just install Erlang and you, you will have it. And the idea behind that is really having no dependencies at all. That's, that's the main idea. Do, do you have question? Mm -hmm. 
it's it, it, it's it's really dumb to be honest with you it's really really dumb uh, you don't have fancy features if you want to set for example ssl you need to start ssl and just put the configuration uh, directly uh, from the configuration itself uh, you have a lot of different kind of stuff you can s uh, set the mime tips for types for example uh, you can have a lot of small option but in our case uh, just to serve some static or not really static but really small files uh, html files or something like that it's it's enough so with 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 this quick introduction i think you can create at least a small servers and already create some logic uh, you know behind it You, you you can uh, you can take a look on the on the user skid. You have lot a lot of nice example, and you have an um, yeah you you have an idea of the different modules available directly from HTTPD. So if you want, for example, to create the authentic authentication features or create use for example the tracing features to have an idea of what's going on with different kind of request, you can use it. So that again, that's pretty nice. If you want to store the logs, you have a module school called mod logs or something like that, and you can write the log uh, e everywhere. Uh, you can even store them in Nesia, for example. So that's pretty flexible, and you can do a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no problem. I'm, uh, yeah, and if you want to do some tests, because actually, if you have the services, you all uh, or also have the HTTPC command, uh, the HTTPC client for you know cr craft your own request. It's it's enough also. So if you want to check if, for example, your pass, uh, your root is okay, and your object is okay as well, you can use HTTPC. So, yeah and next next introduction i will show you mnesia how to use it and maybe ets as well just to ju just to show you how to deal with those kind of stuff and uh, and i think it will be okay after that because i don't want to use any any other features from from the beam and uh, we, 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 the idea is really to craft something cool only with a few amount of dependencies. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it is cool. It could cool show to other people that if you have an idea of what you want, you don't need to have the latest version of some weird tool from i don't know what kind of project or language you know and you if you want to create your proof of concept you just need to have a good id a stuff where everything is present and just hack it <laughs> yeah 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 i i i i i i showed you uh, uh, yeah, I, I see. I saw this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I, yeah, I think is Erlang is really a kind of minimalist tool because you have everything in it. And I think a lot of language should have do the same in the past because they actually, for example, if you are using Elixir and I'm coding right now in Elixir, uh, you have. A shit ton of dependencies for everything. Uh, I, I'm I'm trying to learn Rust, and that's the same. Uh, so, for example, I'm just creating a small parser, and uh, when I started to write it, uh, I I did just you know few dependencies, <laughs> and I, at the end I had like one 
one or two gigabytes of compiled dependencies. I say, okay, that's just to parse a, a fucking string, guys. <laughs> That's 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 just crazy. To, to to be honest with you, if we want to have something, uh, you know, a bit beautiful after you know, kind of great front end, I really like Mistwill GS. And if you don't know it, just take a look. And uh, that, uh, sorry, the name is Mistwill GS. Uh, I think if you can. Uh, watch my screen yeah and that's the kind of uh, alternative to react and it's really small and it's it's easier than react and Vue.js. it's i like it to be honest with you i like it and uh, you can do a lot of great stuff in few amount of time just by using this one And one one of my ideas uh, was to use probably this one to create an interface just after and to put some, you know, dynamic part on the front end. But yeah, cor correct, correct. And, and, and again, this is a really small one. I, I, I'm not sure if I, I check out a lot of other alternatives to React and I think this one is nice because <clears throat> the components are made, uh, not the component, oh, it's called, sorry, uh, it's Vnode maybe? No, it's not Vnode. I don't remember the name, but you have something really similar than the closure way of thinking. Uh, that means when you are creating, for example, uh, your, uh, yeah. I will give you an example here. Uh, if you want to create, for example, um, I don't know what to call that, a node in HTML uh, with a tag, you just have to use this function here. So you have M function followed by the name of the tag and the content of it. And you can directly create really complex stuff with that. Uh, introduction, I think you have an ID here. So here. So you can easily compose your code just by using that. And that's really great because you can probably, I say probably because I, I never tried right now, use ETF uh, format, uh, ETF format, I don't know if you know that, but uh, you can do, for example, term to binary. <sighs> for example, test, and we have these values here and these values here is an ETF. ETF it's a format used by Erlang to communicate with other nodes and you can easily parse it and convert it to another format for example JSON or, or so on or maybe in BERT and BERT is uh, it's an old way to communicate uh, with different kind of other services uh, using um, ARPC philosophy and the idea is uh, where is it? I think it's from the archive JSON okay from the ar archive <coughs> and so it was created like in 2010 or maybe a bit yeah, I don't remember when, but yeah, it was maybe in 2010 and it was mainly used at uh, GitHub uh, for the communication between the different services. And the idea was to use the ETF, so the long term format, uh, a small subset of this format to communicate with the different nodes. And the guy who created that uh, was also the creator, the founders of GitHub co-founder and you have a lot of information there on how it's working and why they did that and i think probably it's always the case so when you are using github you are probably using better better rpc as well maybe because actually you have something called a uh, cyber right now 
and probably they migrated to that but this is another format uh, using binary and uh, that's that's another way to communicate with different uh, nodes or maybe different services quickly but but as you can see in javascript we have bare.js and i already tested it and that means if we have bare.js yes yeah, there is a fork of this one but uh, you can use it you don't even need J J json from erlang you just need to put some etf okay from erlang and when this payload will be loaded on the javascript part so on the browser part you can decode this payload and convert it directly in javascript data format so that means we don't even need to have a parser somewhere so that's that's another id and you can plug for example bear.js directly in mystery.js and use them together to create what what you want that's 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 really possible and i did some tests and it's also why i uh, it took me a lot of time to, to to explain everything because i wanted to test something by myself before because i don't want to sell you some dreams and so when i started along purge is well it was to you know to 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 make a proof that along is still a really great tool and you don't need elixir to do something great and so one of my ig at the end because actually we have a lot of things to do this is not a priority um, my main ig is to use for example mistral gs or a subset of mistral gs with for example bear gs and bertie so the code i just uh, show you here this is a night level implementation of uh, of the BERT, so we are not using binary to term because there is a lot of security issue with that uh, you have the whole explanation here but i will show you a de a de uh, i can show you a, a small <laughs> demo someday but anyway and so the idea is to use something like that to communicate with for example javascript or maybe a browser or something like that and just using etf Yeah, in, in fortune, yeah. I'm not really. I, I, I think we could do it, but we don't have the tools to do it correctly. We have WebAssembly, and with WebAssembly, we can do a lot of stuff. Yes, we need to bootstrap at first with JavaScript, unfortunately. But only one line of JavaScript is far more better than using 10,000 line of JavaScript in a framework. You don't even know how it's working and who put everything in it. And, and, and actually, we need a way to compile from Erlang to WebAssembly, and I think we already told about that uh, in the past. But it's 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 really really important to have that in mind. And the way Elixir and Phoenix and LiveView are using, for example, JavaScript with a WebSocket, to me it's a pure hack. This is not the good way for doing that. The good way is to create a kind of subset of Erlang directly running in the browser using for example WebAssembly and when this application is started it will try to connect to the Erlang node so the servers creates a connection between them a link and every information will be directly sent uh, from the client to the servers using event processing and after that, if you want to do some JavaScript or anything you want, you can do it. But you already have a way to execute Erlang code directly in the browser. 
And if you can do that, you can do practically everything after. Maybe one day if we have time, but I think we have a lot of other priorities, at least on my side, uh, I really want to create a full audit of the Erlang application and release. And it's also why I want to work on awesome Erlang list, because I think we need to have an inventory, a clear inventory of everything. And we need a way to to give to the people interested in Erlang an easy way to search what they are looking for. So for example, if you if they want to have an idea on, you know, if they want to have example for Amnesia or HTTP or something like that, they should have it quickly. And, and the next part is to do a lot of code analysis. Uh, for example, why I created Berti because uh, I was talking with Mart and he had a kind of project, uh, you know, create a small chat services. And I said, oh, yeah, I want to develop one. It seems funny. And I, I, I just, <laughs> you know, I think you know me a little bit right now. And I just put one constraint, uh, ne not use a lot of dependencies. And I said, okay, no problem. No dependencies. I will just use ETF and we'll create a client in Erlang and the server in Erlang. And when I started to play with it, I say, but it's weird. Actually, if I can send, I can send like ETF payload, I can craft by pay bad payload. And you can do a lot of crazy stuff with that. So for example, if you can see my screen here right now, uh, I've found a lot of projects using binary, term to binary, uh, without checking anything. And that's just fucking crazy, because if someone is using that in production, you have the possibility to break and kill the nodes. And if there are, but there, there is more. Say you have Nesia or any kind of database running in background and those database uh, will store for example atoms or something like that so usually if you are using ets ets on disk or maybe amnesia and probably other low level data structure uh, database so for example rocksdb i think rocksdb can store atom you can destroy the nodes and the database because you will store a, a really big amount of atoms and if you can do that you can break the world services and if you can do that correctly you can create some uh, Daniel of services and I was playing with that it was kind of funny uh, because uh, you can just make the beam totally crazy so uh, CPU usage or you can also um, create uh, memory uh, exhaustion and so on it's, it's just totally crazy but if 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 you want to to read these things uh, um, uh, i would like to create um, something a bit better but i don't have a lot of time right now but you have the full documentation the full id and the list of the resources you if, if you have some question and so on That's, yeah. No, it's it, it's not stupid. It was created for productivity. Unfortunately, when when you are dealing with productivity, you don't you hide everything, and that's great because you will do some things really quick, really fast. But when something will go bad somewhere, you know, you will need to do some small optim optimization in some part of your code you have a problem because in fact you don't know anything on all things are working yeah, no, <laughs> 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 I, I, I 
you you know you are talking about frameworks, but Erlang is a framework by itself because Erlang is hiding a lot of complexity we have with concurrency, parallelism, and uh, distributed environments. That's that's the idea behind Erlang. But what it's great with Erlang, it's you have all the important stuff you don't really care are being you know put somewhere you don't really care because you will probably never play with that that's that's not the case for example with a uh, go or even java in java you are dealing with a lot of stuff you don't really care you know that's for example the list in java you know that's that's really close to the c way of creating a list uh, an array and you you can find the same in Go. Why in Go you have some pointers? That's crazy. You, you, that, that's a night level language, you know. You don't need pointers. And that's why Erlang is great, because this is a kind of great, you know, uh, Joe Armstrong and all the team behind Erlang just puts everything, the, the, the good amount of everything. If you want to do something complex, you will create an if, or maybe a driver, or maybe a C node, or maybe a port. But usually you don't really have to, because your virtual machine will do all the bad job for you. And you just have to deal with the complexity of your algorithm, algorithm or maybe your protocol, or maybe your, your business logic. And every, every other complexity, every other problem, you will see the, that later and the first thing is fix your business logic and then you will go to do the crappy stuff with c or maybe rust or something like that but that's not the main goal of, of erlang anyway that's that's yeah but i think if if you are starting to read the code i give you right now I think you will have a lot of a good idea of how it's working. And when you are dealing with ETF, for example, the long term format, you will understand a little bit how the virtual machine is working. Because ETF is the blood, maybe not the blood, but really close to the blood of Erlang. Is this format is used everywhere in Erlang. No problem. I have 10 minutes remain uh, just i will i want to show you where you can find it so i will start just some things really really quickly so i will create a pool of server so a cluster so i have two nodes here and i will connect them together and i will start tcp dump uh, Uh, a PMD. I don't know if you know a TCP dump. <laughs> okay, that's 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 uh, that's an application on Unix to uh, directly read what's going on on different network port address and so on. Uh, I was doing that like long time ago. So maybe I did something wrong here. Ah, okay, that's that that that's working. Okay, so when I do a ping, for example, you can see we have a lot of information uh, coming from one node to another, and as you can see, this is a kind of binary stuff, and and this binary stuff is actually in ETF formats. So if I do just the A here, so I will do just the ping again. So we have the raw stuff. I don't know if it's encrypted. I'm not sure it is, uh, but it was not the case in the past. So I will just try to call something on the other node. So for example, I will do uh, execute. I don't remember that it's call maybe or cast. I will do a call. So we have the node, it will be test at parrot, and we will do the module. So for example, IO, 
and we will have the function so it will be format and the argument it will be for example hello world okay and here normally if it's not encrypted it is not encrypted as you can see you have the IO reply here and in theory you should have also the call of the function uh, where is it where is it uh, I think I, I will I will redo it just to have some things a bit easier to understand and you have the call just here I can see hello world uh, where is hello world hello world just there and here this things here it's ETF so that's the format used uh, directly by Erlang to, communi to communicate with other nodes and you have also the answer here because actually it's a call I guess yeah it's a call and you can use it as a cast for example and it will be do the same so we have the hello world so it's working anyway it's working and it was just to show you ETF is really the blood for Erlang or if it's not the blood for Erlang it's the blood for the distributed version of Erlang where you need to communicate with the other nodes mm, predictable I'm not sure because <laughs> it's not like protobuf uh, if you want an alternative, you have Protobuf. protobuf. Uh, it was made by Google like 10 or 15 years ago. And this is a fixed uh, deterministic data structure, binary data, data structure. So when you are creating something with Protobuf, uh, you always know what will happen. This is not really the same case with ETF by default. So for example, if you are sharing uh, a reference or maybe a, fun a function a lambda function directly in ETF you don't have all guarantee that the same thing will be will have the same you know the same object created in one node will have the same result on the other node so this is not deterministic but you can do a lot of stuff with it and if you just have for example uh, some list uh, to, to to send and with some integers and so on you can do it easily that that's a bit like f for json for example you don't have a lot of 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 security in json except for the syntax but yeah anyway uh i would need to move uh so I hope you enjoyed this small lesson. <laughs>